Who doesn't love fireworks? Their brilliant colors are candy for the eyes. But do you know where the spectacular colors come from? Different chemical compounds give off different colors when they are burned. In a safe, I repeat, safe setting, you can make colors of your own from chemicals too. The flame might appear the same color for each chemical, but by looking through a tool called a spectroscope, you can see how each element gives off distinctive colors. Spectroscopes work kind of like prisms to separate out colors of light. They use a process typically known as diffraction to separate out wavelengths of light by passing light through a slit. Wait, wavelengths of light? That sounds familiar, doesn't it? So remember, light acts like a wave that carries energy from one place to another. And size matters. Shorter wavelengths carry more energy than longer wavelengths. Scientists, like chemists and astronomers, measure the wavelengths and give names to certain ranges of wavelengths. Okay, back to our flame. Remember the pattern of light that we saw in our spectroscope? That is a unique pattern for only the main element burning, known as a spectrum. Scientists have observed and measured the wavelengths of all the elements very precisely in a lab. So we know that hydrogen gives off these specific colors. Purple, blue, green, and red at these specific wavelengths. Other elements, when burned, give off different patterns. When you know the pattern of the colors, you can identify the element. Let's test this out. Which flame is burning sulfur? This one is the sulfur. But what if there are multiple elements burning, like in a star? Wow, that looks pretty messy. Because stars are made up of many different elements, we're seeing the patterns of all of them combined into one complicated spectrum. So let's look at a familiar star, our sun, to see what it's made of. Most telescopes on and above Earth have a spectroscope to break apart the wavelengths of light to give us a pattern like this. Then, astronomers take the individual wavelengths and analyze the light to determine not only which elements are present, but also the relative amounts of each element. This is how scientists understand that the sun is made up of mostly hydrogen, a little bit of helium, and a teeny bit of oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and neon. And here's where it gets super cool. You know all those planets we've discovered around other stars, also called exoplanets? We now know of thousands of them outside of our solar system. Well, we can use the same tools to see if there are life-supporting elements such as oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon in the atmospheres of those planets. Most exoplanets have been detected by seeing a dip in the light from the star as the planet is passing in front of it. If the planet aligns just right with its star, we can view the star's light passing through the planet's atmosphere. This allows us to measure its spectrum to understand what it's made of. The planet Kelt 9b has a very thick atmosphere, so its spectrum is easy to read. Scientists using this method were able to see that its atmosphere is made up of hydrogen. And scientists continue to refine these tools and methods. For example, the James Webb Space Telescope, due to launch soon, will expand our view of the universe. Two of its instruments are specifically designed to be able to block out the brighter light from stars to see the fainter light from exoplanets. Maybe one day, using light and color, we'll be able to find a habitable planet other than the Earth. Until then, we can use color to explore lights right here on our own living planet.